بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد أهل السنة والجماعة are modern amongst all the sects of this ummah and as we're mentioning and that we're still in the book Aqidat Wasatiyah by Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and discussing how Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah that they take the middle course and that they are the Firqat al Najiyah. They are the Sayyid sect that the Prophet mentioned in several hadiths. For example, the hadith Iftirat al Ummah, Kama Qala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iftarat al Yahud al Yatu wa Sabain Firqa. وَفْتَرَكَتَ النَّصَارَ عَلَى ثِنَتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً وَسَتَفْتَرِكُ هَذِهِ أُمَّةَ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً كُلُّهَا فِي النَّارِ وَاحِدَةٌ كُلٌّ مِنْ هِيَ يَعْصُمُ اللَّهُ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ الْيَوْمَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the Jews would break into seventy-one sects, and the Christians would break into seventy-two sects, and my Ummah would break into seventy-three sects, all of them in the hellfire except one. And then the Prophet ﷺ was asked by the companions, Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon uh, in this time. So that makes clear for us that we would break into groups and sects. And that only one would be saved from the fire. And that's why the Ummah, why uh, the, the ulama, they call them the Firqat al Najah, also uh, the saved sect, because they're the ones saved from what? From the hellfire. And in addition to that, in the countless hadith, the Prophet warned us against bid'ah, kulu bid'at, and dalala, kulu dalala, and binar. Every innovation is a leading astray, and every leading astray leads to the hellfire. And the Prophet said, as was reported by Aisha, that the Prophet said, Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Let us know that bid'ah and religious heresy is rejected. It's away from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasulullah Wasallam. And so, adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and the sect that does so, based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and the Madhab and the Salaf. Not according to their desires, not according to their his, not according, according to their masjid or their group of brothers and sisters they hang out with, or whatever, or their, their people, their home, their nationality, their race, their color. No, that's going to benefit you. The only thing that's going to benefit you is your taqwa. Did you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did you call the kitab in the Sunnah of the Rasul and adhere to what the Prophet came with? But we find many of those sects. Or all of those sects uh, that are away from Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah, that they deviated. So, we're going to talk very quickly about how some of these groups we, we mentioned in the last lecture about the Mushabiha. They are called the Mujassima because they are, of course, they're opponents of the Jahmiyyah, as we mentioned. The Jahmiyyah flee from their creed to their negation of Sifat. And they are opponents of the Jahmiyyah in the affirmation of names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe that Allah possesses a hand similar to the hand of his creatures. Uh, hearing as hearing of his creatures, sight as the sight of his creatures, etc. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exalted and free from what the wicked sinners say about him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the case of the Mujassima and the uh, the Mushabiha. Those people who make a resemblance between Allah and His uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creatures, you know, human beings and other things that possess hearing and sight and those qualities, and they make a resemblance between their characteristics and the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah negates in the Quran. He says, Lays commit me shaykh, basir. He said that there is nothing comparable to him, and he is the all hearing, the all seeing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Affirm, uh, negates for himself that there's any resemblance between him and his creatures 
And he affirms for himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he does possess hearing and seeing. His hearing and seeing is not like his creatures, and his creatures' hearing and seeing is not like him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Jabariyya. The Jabariyya, they are, uh, they are like the Jahmiya and all those people who follow them. Their belief is that the slaves, meaning you and I, human beings, have no will and power to do good deeds and avoid bad deeds. They believe everything was decreed for them and that they are forced to do good and bad. So they're just automatically, there's no free will and they're forced. So if someone uh, who holds this creed, for example, they say, hey, I'm drinking alcohol and I'm committing adultery. This is, um, this is the qadr, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're right, it is the qadr. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, but it doesn't please Allah. And you have the choice to do that. So then they are choosing to do the sin, but they're using the qadr to justify their evil. So they're saying, hey, you know, uh, you know, I was destined for this, so I'm going to complete this destiny. But this is incorrect. And so this is the creed of the Jabariyya. Uh, also the Qadariyya, which is also uh, uh, a type of the, the Jabariyya is a type of the Qadariyya. The, they are the Mu'tazila and all those who agree with them. So the Mu'tazila held uh, Qadriya uh, belief. And the Jahmiya had uh, a Jabr that they believed in, uh, that they were forced, you know, that there was no free will of the slave and that the, uh, that the slave had no choice in doing what they did, doing evil deeds or good deeds. So the Qadriya, they are the Mu'tazila. And though all those who agreed with them, their belief is that Allah, the Exalted, has enjoined the slaves to do good and forbidden them from evil. He doesn't know his obedient slaves from his disobedient ones, but only after committing the good or bad. So they actually, uh, although they go against the Jabariyya, they are they believe that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't have full knowledge that He is not. That he is not the all knowing. They negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of knowing whether the slave will do good or bad until after the event occurs. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. He knows what has taken place, what will take place, what is taking place, and what could have took place. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is because he's the creator of the heavens and earth. He has full knowledge of all things. So the Qadariya, they believe that uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has uh, you know, enjoined the slaves to do good and, and forbidden them from evil, but he does not know his, uh, the, the, the righteous ones from the, uh, from the uh, disobedient ones until after they've committed uh, their sins or after they've done good deeds. The Murjiya, the Murjiya, they believe that Iman, Faith is uh, just a matter of a testimony of the heart and a confession of the tongue. They believe that, for example, you take the Shahada, that you bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship and that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger, and they believe that's sufficient. And then to hold some sort of Iman in your heart, they believe that Iman doesn't uh, fluctuate, that there's no fluctuate. You're either a full believer or you're not a believer. And you can't leave Islam unless you say that in your heart. Meaning you can do any sin. You can do anything. Step on the Quran, but as long as you, in your heart, you believe, or you believe you believe, you're a mu'min. This is what the Murjiya believe. So they say that committing sins does not harm your Iman. And likewise, good acts do not benefit in the state of kufr. And the extremists from amongst them, they say, it is only the testimony of the heart and the shahada. Uh, the testimony of the heart and the shahada does not need to be proclaimed. So the extreme murjiyah say that you don't even have to uh, utter the testimony of faith to take the shahada, as long as you're a believer in your heart. So this is also a innovation in the religion of Islam, and depending on the level of deviance, can expel someone from the fold of Islam. 
and is very serious and very dangerous. Then you have the Wa'idiyya. They are the same as the Qadriyya in the implementation of Wa'id, meaning the, the, the punishments. They believe that if a person committing the major sin dies without repentance, he will be in the hellfire forever. So this is like the Mu'tazila. Uh, the reason is that Allah has promised the sinners to hell and doom, and he never breaks his promise. This is what they believe. So they believe that the sinner who dies upon the major sin, that they're going to be in the hellfire forever. But this goes against the creed of Ahl Sunnah, and this goes against the Nasus from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, which lets us know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk. But he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. Letting us know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the major sins. If inshallah, uh, the people who die on the major sin, inshallah, wa inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will either, in accordance with his will, subhanahu, forgive them, or he will give them punishment. But they will be taken out of the fire if they were a believer. If they were a believer, even if they were a sinner, they can still be a Muslim, but yet they will be taken out of the fire. So this is very important to know that Ahl Sunnah holds the belief that your, your, your Iman goes up with righteous deeds and it goes down with uh, sin, uh, with uh, sinfulness and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that also, that, uh, that the person who dies upon the major sin, that yes, they are a wicked sinner, but they're still a Muslim. And they will, the fact that they died as a Muslim, they, can, they will still come out of the hellfire and enter paradise at some point or another in accordance with the decree and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if He wills to forgive them, He will forgive them. If not, He will punish them and then take them out of the fire. So they will have some of the taste of the fire, but in ter eternally they will live in the paradise. This is the creed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have the Hororiyah. The Hororiyah meaning the Khawarij, those people who rebelled against Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he accepted arbitration with Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. These people gathered in a place called, uh, named Hurura which is located at uh, two miles from Kufa and named Hororiyah in this respect. So the Khawarij, they believe that the major sinner will dwell in the hellfire forever. And they believe that a person who commits major sins is a disbeliever. So that's why the Khawarij, they make, they're known for tikfir. They are known for decreeing other Muslims to be heretics. So for example, the person who drinks alcohol to them is a disbeliever. The person who commits uh, adultery or zina or whatever, they are disbelieving. The one who watches pornography is a, is a disbeliever to the Khawarij. Ahl Sunnah says, no, they've done a wicked sin, they can make tawbah and repentance, and they're still a believer. They're still a, a, a Muslim. They're still in the fold of Islam. And they still can come back to Allah, Azza wa Jal, the creator of the heavens and earth, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, al ghafur al wudu Subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah bless us all to be forgiven for our sins. And so those are just some of the things. Also, it's imperative we talk about the Rafidah. The Rafidah, the Shia, uh, they are the extreme sect of the Shia who gave up Zayd ibn Ali ibn Hussein when he showed love to Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala They disregarded him in Kufa, so they, they freed themselves from him because he would not free himself from Abu Bakr or Umar. He loved them. Radiallahu ta'ala radiallahu ta'ala because they were the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were the best of this nation. They were the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in. So this sect of people, these Shia, the extremists, Rafada, they disregarded him in Kufa and adopted the name, the same attribute as they have done with his grandfather Hussein. So they freed themselves. And because they, the Rafada, the various forms of the Rafada, some of them, they make takfir of the Sahaba. They just say they're disbelieving. Some of them, they call them hypocrites, basically the same. Some of them, they just curse them, and, and so forth. They curse Aisha, the mother of the believers, anha, and they curse all the companions of the Prophet So they have different levels. Some, they make takfir, they just say they're not Muslim at all. Some of them, they, and they accuse them of tampering with the Qur'an, they accuse them of distorting the Qur'an, they accuse them of hiding verses, they can, can, uh, accuse them of taking over the Khilafah, when it should have went to Ali, according to them, and many other manifestations of deviance and heresy. 
So this is why the Raf and the Shia are not Muslim. We do not, they don't have, we can't eat their food, you can't eat their meat. If they're a Raf of the Shia, you cannot eat their meat. If they're a Raf of the Shia, you cannot uh, pray with them, pray behind them, or anything like this. Uh, if they're a Raf of the Shia, you should have no relations with them, unless you want to call them to Islam, invite them to the Quran and the Sunnah, especially if they're someone who's ignorant and who's receptive to, uh, uh, to Islamic knowledge, then yes, call them to Islam. However, you should free yourself from them, because they freed themselves from our, the fathers of this ummah, the Sahaba of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of this nation, the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they negate the Qur'an, and they get, negate the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and there's so much ample books out there and the details about this, this is not the time or the place, but we just wanted to get a, 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 a background about how these different sects differ with Ahlul Sunnah and why Ahlul Sunnah is wasat between them because Ahlul Sunnah loves the Sahaba of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ahlul Sunnah loves Ahlul Bayt Radiyallahu Ta'ala Majma'in Ahlul Sunnah they affirm the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as they came in the Quran as they came in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ahlul Sunnah believes in Iman as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, articulated Iman uh, based in his authentic sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and according to the Qur'an, and according to the madhab of the Salaf al-Sa'id, radiyallahu ta'ala ajma'in. So all of this makes us in the middle compared to those other groups, compared to the Ahl al-Tashbih, with the Jahmi, wa Mu'tazila, wa Mu'attala, wa Asha'ir, wa Kulabiyya, wa Matridiyya, wa Khawarij, wa Uhuriyya, wa the Neo-Takfiris, and all these other groups that have, dis that have went astray. All of these sects that went astray and distorted the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or very important aspects of creed. Another point I want to mention before we end this, this particular dars is that also uh, I heard a, a very beneficial uh, fight that Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh mentioned after Allah ta'ala when he was describing, he was asked about uh, the difference between the jama'at and the sects, meaning the Ahzab, the Hizbiyun, and the Firqa, or, or Firq, meaning the groups and sects versus the groups like Akhwan Muslimi, Jamaat uh, Takfir wa Hijra, Jamaat Tabliq, uh, the Sururis, the, uh, all these various groups that you have out there. And he said that those, uh, one of the differences is that you find that a lot of those groups, for example, Khwan Muslimin and so forth, like we just mentioned the Khwarij and all those other groups, that they hold a particular creed or minhaj, uh, a particular creed with regards to how they deviated from Ahl Sunnah, you know, with regard to the Qadr or Iman or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. And you'll find that those his, the Hizbiyun, those groups, these new groups, which are not really sects, but they're more groups. Akhwan Muslimin, you can't say Akhwan Muslimin altogether have one specific creed because you'll find amongst Akhwan Muslimin, every, you'll find even some Su Sufis, you'll find some people who worship graves, you'll find people who are very close to Ahl Sunnah in their creed, but yet they just have this political inclination, so they go with Akhwan Muslimin. You'll have every type of uh, 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 variation in creed, so they don't hold a particular creed. Likewise with uh, Jamaat al the uh, uh, the tabliq, jamaat al tabliq. What do you find? You just find many people, Muslims from all over, who have various types of aqidah and creed that come together and call people to the salat and call people to make khuruj and, and, and do their various activities that they do. They do not come together on one specific creed. You'll find some people from amongst uh, uh, jamaat al tabliq who may be Salafi or may be Salafi in their creed. But their minhaj, they went astray in a particular aspect of minhaj. They see that there is benefit in going with jamaat al tabliq or whatever. So this is why uh, this was a faida that uh, Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh mentioned is that there's a difference between those ahzab, those hizbiyun, those groups, versus the sects. Sectarianism, they hold a specific creed or belief, whereas the hizbiyun and the groups, they uh, uh, these new groups which are not really set, that they don't necessarily unite upon a particular creed. You might have various creeds amongst them, 
but they unite upon a particular minhaj in da'wah, a particular methodology in doing da'wah. A Quran Muslimin will accept everyone under the same umbrella and they agree to excuse one another for their differences and let's unite upon those things we agree upon. That's the madhab or the minhaj of a Quran Muslimin. So they will have Sufis amongst them, they disregard the dis differences, and they come together. And they'll have people who have the creed, generally, of Ahl Sunnah. will all come together in the same umbrella and just say, hey, we're Muslim, let's work together in those things we agree with. That's not the method of the Salaf Sa'i. That's not what the Prophet ﷺ called us to. He, he, he and the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنه أجمعين, were free from Ahl Bid'ah. They freed themselves from them. So that's why we can't unite upon any old call. We can only unite based on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as I mentioned, Jamaat al you will have many different people who have various creeds, uh, Sufis, people who worship graves, some people who are Naqshibandi, people who prohibit grave worship, you have people who have various types of uh, creeds, you'll find a Haram Sunnin, you'll find people who have the creed basically of Ahl Sunnah, you'll find Tekfiris even going with them, you'll find everyone going with them to unite upon those, their particular methodology of da'wah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil.